In this video, I'm going to cover some of the main structure editing and building tools available in the Secro plugin for Chimera X. I'm going to start with the 2D Builder. So that's under Tools, Structure Editing, 2D Builder. Um, so all you have to do for this is basically sketch out a molecule in two dimensions. Uh, with this molecule sketcher here, um, you can do stereochemistry. Um, let's see, I'll just do, just do that. Um, and then you can, uh, you know, click open molecule and it'll go and generate a 3D structure for that, uh, for what you've drawn. Um, so pretty easy to use. Uh, and you can also choose to optimize it with one of these semi-empirical methods. Uh, you can choose the name, so by default, the name is just new. Um, and yeah, so the 3D structure is generated using this uh, NCI, National Cancer Institute, web API. So you do need internet access to be able to use this. And also that web API is more uh, targeted towards like um, pharmaceutical compounds. So uh, pretty much this only works reliably for organic molecules. I have had a few organometallic compounds work, but that's few and far between. Um, I would try and use something else for that. Speaking of which, the next tool I'm going to cover is the coordination complex generator. This is uh, definitely more well suited for organometallic compounds. So for this, you choose uh, like the central element for the coordination complex. Let's do palladium. Uh, you choose the coordination geometry. I'll leave it as octahedral. And then you choose uh, enough ligands to fill up that coordination geometry. So I'm going to put, let's see, put some like uh, phosphine ligand on there with two. I'll just pick one, binapture. Um, and then I'll put, let's go, I'll put EDA on there. Um, and then I will put, let's see, um, oops, I'll put hydrogen on there. And the search bar is a regular expression search bar, so I can use the caret for starts with. Um, two hydrogens will fill that up. Okay. So this R binap is bidentate, EDA is bidentate, um, and then two H's, that's six, which is enough for octahedral. So then when I hit create coordination complexes, uh, that'll generate the three different um, possibilities for organizing those uh, ligands in a octahedral coordination geometry. So can see these are different. Close this as well. These uh, coordination geometries were enumerated by uh, Simus, which the citation for that is here. Um, if you want to know more about how that was done. Um, so this is just limited to mono and bidentate ligands, but uh, I think it works well for getting starting structures. All right, the next tool I'm going to talk about is the Z matrix builder. Um, so this is what you would use if you want to really ensure that your structure has a certain symmetry. Um, I'm going to use this to build cyclopentadiene anion, which should have D5H symmetry. Uh, so with this one, you select your element. Um, I'm going to start out placing all the carbons. Uh, I'll just place an atom to start with. So now you are defining, uh, or you're adding atoms by defining their position relative to other atoms. And once you start selecting atoms, you'll see uh, kind of how that atom is being used. So now that I've selected this atom, I can see that it's being used to define the distance for the new atom. Um, and then some common distances, you might want to use like an average bond length, um, which you can look up down here, so you can choose the elements. Um, 
I am going to be adding carbons, but uh, so the average bond length for a carbon-carbon single bond is about 1.5. Um, a one and a half order bond or an aromatic bond would be about 1.4. Double bonds, 1.34 and so on. Um, I'm going to be using the aromatic bond length. So once I add this atom here, uh, I can go ahead and select this one. And now uh, this new atom, this uh, C2, that's going to be used for the distance for the next atom I'll add. And then um, C1 is going to be used for the angle. So it'll be going off like this. Uh, so the internal angle of a cyclopentadiene anion is going to be about 108 degrees. But if I was building some other structure, it might be convenient to use one of these uh, quick angles down here where I can just click on that and it'll fill in the box for me. Um, but I'll be using 108. So we'll add that atom. And then um, now with three selected, um, C1 is going to be defining the torsional angle, which I want to be zero degrees. And then uh, now atom two is going to be defining the um, sort of the bend angle and the C3 is the distance. So just adding the last atom in that cyclopentadiene anion ring. And then we'll add a bond between those two to close it. Uh, I'm just going to reapply the preset to fix that um, bond radius so it looks nice. And then now I'm going to be switching to hydrogen to place the hydrogens around the ring. And then I'll look up the an average CH bond length, um, of course a single bond there. Uh, so now I do need to change a few other things. The valence angle uh, should be about 126 degrees and the torsional angle should be, I can use this down here, should be 180 degrees. So if we add that, it goes there and I can just kind of go around the ring and add all the rest of these hydrogens. All right, there we go. So that should be D5H. Let me just check. Yep, D5H, as expected. All right, uh, now this one, probably would have turned out exactly the same using the 2D Builder. Uh, however, the 2D Builder cannot do multiple molecular fragments. So if you have like two molecules in the structure you're trying to build um, and you need them to be in a particular symmetry, the uh, 2D uh, sketcher would not be able to do that. All right, so the next tool I'm gonna show uh, has a few different names. Um, so there is, let's see, change element, um, and these all have different menu options, even though they go to the same tool, but um, change element, uh, change substituents, fuse ring, and swap transition metal ligands. Um, so what change element does is it changes the element. Uh, so I can select this hydrogen here and change its element to carbon, and then also update its uh, like Vesper geometry. So I'm gonna make it tetrahedral, but I can choose something else. Um, and it'll add enough hydrogens or remove hydrogens to uh, get to the desired, ge desired geometry. So change selected elements, and now what was a hydrogen is now a methyl group. Um, I can also use this to place an atom in this structure. So I need to select that. I'm going to place an iron atom in there, and I don't want any things bonded to that iron for right now. So I'm going to go up here do not change the geometry, just add the atom as it is. So place in that structure. And then uh, I'm gonna use the move atom mouse mode to kind of drag that around. Let's put that right about here, okay. Um, and then I'm gonna try and actually turn this into a ferrocene ligand, kind of do a quick hack with the combine command. Um, oops. Let's see. 
move model, select that, let's move it up. Not like so, okay. And then I'll just delete the iron in this one. And then I can do... Yeah, so now there is one model uh, with both of those structures in it, or both of those um, cyclopentadiene anions in it. Um, so I can close out these other two. Um, so let's see, we've seen uh, changing elements, we've seen adding elements. Um, let's look at modifying some substituents. So um, uh, there's a list of substituent names. You can see the uh, whole library that we have here. Um, and you can select something here and you'll see the name shows up in the box. So I'm going to use this to put, uh, let's do a CH3 group on there. It's a methyl group, of course. Um, so this I can do uh, multiple positions at once. There's methyl groups. Um, of course, I can do bigger substituents as well, like we have phenyl groups. Um, I can replace this methyl group here with a phenyl group. Okay. And then you can also uh, do multiple substituents at once. So for that, you do have to uncheck this box because um, you're really only going to be modifying one position. Um, or I guess you do multiple positions, but if you replace that position with one substituent and then replace that position again with a different substituent, um, you're not going to see all those substituents in the end. Uh, so the way you do that is you do a comma separated list. So I'm going to do CH3, CF3, um, you can do ethyl, uh, let's see what else can I do. Our captain. What else would be interesting? Let's see, iodine, sure. Um, so now that generated a few different structures. I'll split them up to make them easier to see. So we've got the original structure here, and then the one with um, the CH3 groups, CF3 the ethyl or captain and iodine. So then a bit more about what some of these options are. Uh, relax substituents will rotate the substituent about um, like the bond that connects it to the rest of the molecule uh, in an attempt to minimize steric clashing. Um, and then guess previous substituent. So that uh, basically lets you select just one atom instead of all the atoms in the substituent if you want to replace that with uh, something else. So uh, when you do that, it'll, oops. Uh, when you do that, it will uh, keep the longest or the largest thing bonded to that atom and delete the rest and uh, like replace that with the, replace the shorter groups with um, that substituent. And then use distance names, um, this will uh, basically name the atoms instead of like C1 or F1 using numbers uh, after the element. It'll use like the letters, so uh, A and then B, G for alpha, beta, gamma, and so on. Um, that's really more useful for like modifying protein side chains or some other maybe molecular mechanics stuff. Um, and then new, re new residue will put the substituent into a different uh, residue. So that's also more relevant for uh, molecular mechanics and biochemistry applications. And then you can put a name for that new residue as well. All right, so the next tab on this tool, uh, the swap ligand, this we can use to replace uh, existing ligands on a structure. And so the way this works is you select a ligand from the library uh, that we have. Um, let's see, I'm going to be replacing this 
uh, phosphine ligand here, so I want something that has um, it's two phosphorus atoms. Yo, um, I'm going to just do, let's see, let's do do phos. Okay, and then, oh, I forgot to select the key atoms. Okay. There we go. And there it has been replaced with a Dufos ligand. It's a little bit off kilter, but that should buff out pretty quickly in the optimization process. Um, then I can also go over here and replace these chlorides with something else. Um, I'm going to do EDA. that. Um, and then you can also uh, do like a common separated list here. Um, so uh, again you do have to unselect this modify selected structure and then tile. Okay so there it replaced um, that substitute or that ligand with uh, oh, I guess, yeah, okay, so I, I replaced EDA with EDA. I was like, why Why is this here? But, um, yeah, I replaced the EDA with another EDA, which is going to look like it going to look exactly the same. Um, that's my bad. Okay. So, uh, the next tool, uh, Fuse Ring. So let's say I want to... Um, sort of join a ring somewhere on this structure. Uh, for example, uh, I could do that here to make this um, like a naphthal backbone, basically. Um, so I'd be basically putting a benzene ring on there. Um, so there's that. Uh, I could also put like a cyclohexyl ring on the EDA if I wanted to. And then, so these rings uh, that have like different numbers, those are just different conformers. Um, and it'll try all of those if you have this checked to try and find the one that fits best. So, um, all right, so those are the main uh, structure modification and structure building tools in the Secret plugin for Chimera Axe. If you have any questions, you can leave them down in the comments below.